Hey everybody, so I'm here at Crash Space in Los Angeles. Getting some help with my MakerBot here. Everything seems so good so far. So I uh, just got a little bit of wiring up to do and uh, we'll see how it goes. See you in a second. Alright, so we're about to plug it in here and this is Theron from Crash Space. He's going to help me out. He's the resident master on this. I don't have the drivers on my machine yet, so basically we're just going to plug this in, make sure everything works, and uh, that'll be it for the moment. I'm on my own for a little while, and uh, we'll see how it goes. The moment of truth. Smoke test. No sizzle. Blinky lights are good. That's all good. Fan, nice. Yeah, the fan will only turn on when the power switch on the motherboard is on. Mm. So, so here's the replicator software. And you have to tell it which serial port you're using. And that shows up once this is plugged in through the USB automatically as a choice. Yeah. yeah. So if you if you come in here on uh, on Mac or Linux, it shows up like this. That's the serial that's okay. associated with this cable. Yeah. Um, on your because you're running Windows, it'll be like COM twenty or COM seven or something. Okay. So here we go. Oh, and look, you've got firmware. Hey. We'll just skip that for the time being. But so. We can now pull up the control panel. <clears throat> y axis functional. X axis is not. Uh oh. Okay, Z axis is upside down, so we need to fix that. We'll fix that. So one of these boards is the X, Y, and Z. So here's the Z axis up top. If you find one's backwards, you just reverse the cable. No, that's easy enough. Yeah. Now because these things are meant to be keyed, yeah. this will kind of get stretched out of shape, but so where did I screw up on that then? You didn't. Oh, all right. Just you happens. have a fifty-fifty chance <laughs> of it working correctly or not. Nice. And that when it chunked on the Z, that so you said you didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, because it wasn't seated quite right. Uh, okay. Out. Right. That's that's tweaking. That's not. That was another thing. I should probably get like a bubble level for this and set that on there yep. and check all four sides. That's up. I think you got some wobble in the, uh, in the rods. Okay, so that goes up and down. So we said Y is functional. No, that's a resistor. And the Y is backwards, technically, as well. Right, because, let's see, actually, facing the front of the machine. Um, if I go Y plus, the platform should move towards us. Okay, so. Okay. So, we we'll just do the same thing. Well, it's awful convenient that uh, you can just flip it around like that. Yes, it is. But it's because it's a bipolar mm. stepper. So some whoever put the stepper together with that wire screwed up basically? No, it uh -huh. just just happens it to just be. It just happens, yeah. So Y plus should move towards us, like that. Y minus back. So X. It's trying, I hear it. The board isn't flickering at all. So this is the X down here, let's see. 
You know what? This is the busted cable. Okay. Maybe. That could be. Okay, it's trying to drive it, so you see the little lights there. So if I go Y, see how they flicker like that? Mm. Yeah, the X is not flickering. I have a feeling that your... Well, let's, let's check. Make sure all the connections are seated. Oh, let's pull out a oh. different ribbon there. And yeah, we'll, we'll try that next. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try that. So do you have to park the machine before you turn it off? Or? I, no, no. Oh. There's no, no parking or anything. It's just a matter of... It's your broken, broken header. That'd be a nice, relatively easy fix. So hopefully that is it. I'll see you later, Thurman. All right. It's the cable. It's the cable. Hooray. So, and your X is also backwards. <laughs> so when you go X plus, it should move to the platform that way. Right. Okay, well, again, that's an easy fix. So, um, and that's not a problem. It's odd to see all three of them flipped. Hmm. But, not a problem. Now, you can also flip them in software. But, I figure... Fixing it hardware is better. Yeah. Because then if you update the software and it forgets your software flip, you're still good. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. this cable is uh, not happy. And oh, it, you know what? It's your busted one. Did I put it backwards? Are those... The clips should be facing... No, so the clips are the facing yeah, the right you side. You got it. You got it. Uh, so it's got to right. be that little end right there. Yeah, so... Uh, basically, uh, when I crimped this down initially, I broke that clip right there so it's just another one hopefully that's like a five cent piece but yeah. Radio Shack will be like seven dollars I'm sure well the trick will be finding the right you know the uh, right layout right well, I've got some computer cables that are pins like that but I'd have to splice every one individually uh, right well, you want to avoid that two so. four ten ten pin header hmm. So here's the beauty of the MakerBot being a open source platform. Yeah, they gotta make a better way to search this thing. Yeah, the search engine doesn't work super well. Or if they categorize their stuff. I was looking through, it's like what, 1700 pages or something yes, crazy? And it is. So the beauty is here, so this is the Thingiverse page for the MakerBot and it contains all the source files in this case mostly DXF format mm. but they also list all the parts so what you can do is uh, this will be part of the electronics kit and yeah, let's see here except for this one part Okay. All right, so we test out the motors here. Now we're going to check out the extruder and uh, make sure that gets up to heat. Feed a little plastic through it. Do we have time for that? Or? Yeah, we can give that a try. And take a look over here. So this is basically what it looks like yeah, with a spool of plastic going through there and then down there. And here is an actual print. And hopefully I'll be doing something like this soon. Okay, so you can see there's a little temperature graph here. So the red line is the temperature that it's currently reading, so it's, it's all in Celsius. So we are definitely getting some heat. can smell that cooking. Now, do you put the, the anti-seize or the seize paste on the threads? No. Did you not? Excellent. Oh, yeah? So we don't have to open up the door. Because oh. that stuff will smoke and it burns off. And then oh, it's gone. Okay. So it's like, why did I do that? Oh, wait a second. There was... 
Yes, there is anti-season there. I was thinking on these rods here, because there's some kind of grease you're supposed to put on those. Okay. But the anti seize is on there, yes. Okay. That was what I did last month when I was here. Okay. So that will probably start smoking. We'll probably see smoke pouring off of there, but that's cool. the that paste coming off. So what are we at now? 150 Celsius and cooking. One of the things I was really worried about was the uh, x-axis here. I don't want to push it because it's powered up right now and that could destroy the stepper motor. But it is supposed to be good and tight so I'm happy about that. The belts are pretty good and everything is pretty nice so far. Where are we at? Coming up to 200 Celsius. So let me pause this and get back to you in a second.